At Prevention Institute, we care about health, and that means much more than access to health care or the absence of illness and injury. What that really means is that every single person has the opportunity to achieve their fullest potential and thrive. In the last 15 or so years, we've just seen a tremendous growth in the field of public health and understanding that the neighborhood conditions, the places where we live, where we work, where we play, impact our health and well-being. There's so many factors that are really oppressing communities, both at the systems level, at the structural level, in terms of just community environments. And those things can change. It takes time, but most, most of all, it takes people. My name is Randall. Uh, I'm from the Honolulu site, Kalihi Valley Instructional Bike Exchange, K-Vibe. Uh, my role at K-Vibe is to be an older brother, a mentor, and um, a bike mechanic. Through making connections, communities across the country, very different neighborhoods, some of them were focused on boys of color, some were focused on men of color, some were focused on veterans or military, but all populations that have high exposure to trauma. Our community is one of the last um, working class communities in Honolulu, so we often get looked down upon and we get labeled as the bad kids and the uh, the ghetto kids and the hardhead kids. And our thing at K-Vibe, or what we try to promote is just the opposite of that, which is healthy, young, strong men who take care of their community and, um, yeah. When we end this space, we we're trying to practice what? Active listening. Active listening. In initiatives like Making Connections, there's a planning period where people can really look at what are the factors in community that are impacting us. It allows communities to co-create solutions. And even though they look a little different in different places, they all are based on a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder healing. So in Kankakee, that looks like a veteran center. In Boston, it looks like a breakfast for brothers. In Kalihi Valley, it looks like a bike shop. And in Albuquerque, it looks like young men working in an elementary school, helping those kids learn how to grow vegetables. Racial justice is a really important piece of the work when we talk about health equity. So many of the unjust and unfair outcomes that we see in communities in terms of health or safety and well-being are connected to racism and the different outcomes that people experience um, as a result of the color of their skin. Um, and so that is something that we feel like is very important to address um, if we really are truly interested and talking about health equity. My name is Howard Pinder Hughes. I'm a professor of sociology in the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences at University of California, San Francisco. I've been doing uh, work on violence and violence prevention for the better part of 25 years. Historically and even to this day, um, people who think about violence and vi um, don't really understand prevention. So our role, and I've worked together with Prevention Institute, has been to get people to understand, A, that you actually can prevent violence, and B, that we know well how to do it. Milwaukee, like many cities around the country, um, saw a spike in homicides and non-fatal shootings um, in 2015. And Milwaukee was an early city that identified uh, violence as a public health issue and thus established an office of violence prevention in the health department. The Prevention Institute was instrumental um, in helping co-facilitate the Blueprint for Peace. We came up with something called the Adverse Communities Experiences and Resiliency Framework. And this was a way to understand that adverse childhood experiences are connected to and embedded in the conditions and the situations that communities face themselves in. We engaged um, in over a 10 month period, thousands of Milwaukee residents in partnership with the Prevention Institute and really um, was about engaging the community and defining what we should be doing to prevent and reduce violence. Everything from um, investing in quality after school programs um, to looking at domestic violence, sexual assault and human trafficking prevention, um, restorative practices, as well as gun violence prevention and intervention. 
When we work with communities, we really are talking about shifting power and shifting ownership. And when we see that power building, we're able to see equity building. We're able to see hopefulness building. And people are no longer just consumers of those things in their community, but they're co-creators of change. To me, prevention is the most obvious thing in the world. People are dying. People are suffering. People are injured and ill, and they don't have to be. We know what to do. We have the science behind us, we have the data behind us, and we have community wisdom that has solutions. We need to invest in this, we need to set up policies that support it, and we need to act now for people's health and safety.